The Montreal Canadiens and the Arizona Coyotes have pulled off a big trade, swapping Max Domi for Alex Galchenyuk. We're going to discuss the trade and I'll give you my thoughts coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So obviously this news happened last night. We saw a fairly big trade go down between the Montreal Canadiens and the Arizona Coyotes with them swapping forwards Alex Galchenyuk for Max Domi. When the notification came across my phone and I'm sitting there looking going, oh, what? Max Domi for Alex Galchenyuk. That was my instant reaction. I was really confused. Obviously, it's well documented what the needs are for each of these teams. Um, I can see for the Coyotes' perspective, picking up a guy like Galchenyuk, I think, is a tremendous upgrade in a lot of areas. He can play center. Not that the Hams really gave him much of an opportunity, um, but he certainly has a capability. And there is a quote from John Chaka, uh, which I will put on the screen here, which says that basically they believe in him as a center iceman and they believe he's had success in the past and he can have it again in the future. And they are going to give him the opportunity that they feel he deserves to be a center iceman in the NHL. That's why they made this move. Obviously, Galchenyuk has had his struggles up and down with the Hams over the past few years. It's been well documented that they've been considering trading him for probably, I'd say, the better part of the last year, if not two. I can just imagine what that trade call sounded like when Mark Bergevin and John Shaker are on the phone discussing this deal. Can, can you just imagine how this went? Hey, Bergy, John Shaker here from the Coyotes. How you doing? Yeah, not bad. I did catch you at a good time. I know it's Friday night. It's getting late and all. Uh, you, are you Did I catch you at a good time? Hey John, yeah, no problem. Thanks for the call. Yeah, I'm just it's Friday night. I'm just having a couple beer, taking it easy, getting ready for the draft next weekend. What's up? Well, I know over the past year or two, you've seemed interested in maybe moving Alex Galchenyuk. Is that something you're still interested in doing? Absolutely. For the right price, I'd consider trading Chucky for sure. I mean, he's been up and down. He's struggled. You know, he's been a center. He's been a winger. We really have no idea what he is because we keep moving him around. We never keep him in one position for very long because, uh, you know, with some young players, we just like to mess with their development. So, you know, we're certainly open to trading him for sure. Oh, well, that's great news, Mark. I mean, I'm certainly very interested in taking Galchenyuk off your hands, and I've got a deal for you. Listen to this. What do you think about taking Max Domi? He scored 18 goals in the past two seasons combined. This last year, he put in nine. And you know what? He hit four of them into an empty net. That's right. He scored four goals into an empty net. Can you believe that, Bergy? Well, you know, John, that sounds great. An undersized winger who has trouble scoring. That's exactly what we need right now. You read my mind. Domi for Galchenyuk, one for one, straight up, or no deal at all. Bergy, my friend, you have another beer. You got a deal. So Mark Bergevin has become famous for doing these one-for-one -one trades here in the summertime. During the last few years, he's made these similar type deals. We've seen P.K. Subban trade for Shea Weber. We've seen Mikhail Sergachev trade for Jonathan Druin. And a lot of these deals are looking not so good right now. Alex Galchenyuk has hit 30 goals before. He's hit 20 goals before. He's had a few other seasons where he's hovered around the 20 goal mark. And to be honest, I think a lot of this is not really on Galchenyuk. The Hams have not kept him in one position for very long. He's played center, he's played wing, he's yo-yoed up and down the lineup everywhere. You can say what you want about his inconsistencies, but you can also make some valid arguments that they've really screwed around with his development and this player has not developed into what they're expecting. But I think, you know, yes, to a degree, the onus is on the player, but I think a lot of the onus here is on the team. Now with Max Domi, he's, he's, I don't get me wrong here either. I really like Max Domi. I've been a fan of his really since his junior days. Uh, I love the enthusiasm he brings to the game. He's got, he's not real big, but he brings the grit. Much as I like Domi, I just, I think the Habs really got fleeced here. I mean, he scored 18 goals in the past two seasons and they're giving up a guy who can play center if they just would give him the opportunity, uh, which they so desperately need. Um, and the Habs, as much as, Again, as much as I like Domi, I'm not sure that they need another small undersized winger who's had trouble scoring. This is just not where the Habs need to go. They need help at center ice and they need it badly. Now, Max Domi has also signed a two-year contract extension today. He was a restricted free agent uh, with an annual cap hit of $3.1 million. Galchenyuk's making 4.9, so yes, they do save some money there. And I know there was already, as soon as the news broke, uh, the argument hit in the street already was, well, you know what, they're freeing up cash space because they're going after Tavares. I'm like, okay, um, if you think so. Not to say that they won't be very interested if Tavares hits that point in time where he can negotiate with other teams. I mean, really, they'd be crazy not to. They desperately need a guy like Tavares. 
but I cannot say with any kind of degree of certainty that this was a cap type of deal where they're freeing up space to go after Tavares. They've already got all kinds of cap space right now. They have all kinds of flexibility until they get a lot of their other contracts sorted out. They do not need to free up money to go after Tavares. That option is already open. Um, so will they do that? If given the opportunity, I'm sure they will. And they'll probably throw a ton of money at them to try to bring them over to the Montreal Canadiens. And no doubt. But by no means is that a slam dunk. I mean, at this point in time, I'd say the odds have shifted significantly that he's going to be staying with the Islanders. Uh, so I really don't think this trade has anything to do with Tavares. That's, that's my take on that. I know there's a lot of chatter online about it last night as soon as the news broke. Um, but that's my two cents. I mean, I think Alex Galchenyuk is going to do really well in, in Arizona. I think he's going to be an absolute beast for them. He's going to be given an opportunity to play with some young, exciting forwards and a much bigger role, hopefully on a consistent basis. I really hope for Max Domi's sake as well. He gets his game together and rebounds and kind of becomes more of a scoring winger than that he was expected to be when he was drafted and brought to the NHL. So as we know, Montreal can be a tough market to play in. The fans are very, very passionate. They love themselves some successful hockey players and successful hockey team. And when they're not getting it, they can be, you know, it can be a tough place to play. So hopefully uh, Domi can respond well to the pressure that comes with being a Montreal Canadian and he can get his game together and fit in well there. But to be honest, like with Domi, only like a lot of these other wingers that they have in place if they don't get some top-notch center icemen to play with them it's going to be another season of struggle they need some pivots at the middle of the ice who can distribute the puck skate well and kind of really produce the offense and get things going here at the very least if they see a rebound from Carey Price I'm sure this team is going to do better next year but until they really get some legitimate center icemen I don't think they're going to improve drastically and I don't think they're going to be where they want to be so, you know, I'm sure Mark Bergevin is far from done here. We're going to see more activity from him at the draft. We've been talking a lot lately about the draft and a lot of these videos I've been making discussing activity we could see at the draft. And I've been saying it all along. I suspect Bergevin to be a very, very active general manager this summer, if not the most active possibly uh, within the league. So we'll see how this goes. But right now, I'm not a fan of this trade from the Montreal perspective. I really like Domi, but I think they really... Um, I think they overpaid to bring him into the fold here. I think the Coyotes did well uh, to get a return like Elchenik for a player like Domi. Um, I think Elchenik's much more established. You could argue their points per game over their careers are very similar, but I just think Elchenik is the better player of the two uh, at this point in their careers and a more established player, proven that he can be a 20 to 30 goal scorer where Domi hasn't done that. He had one year of 18 goals, then he's put back to back seasons at nine. So he's been gradually declining. Uh, whereas Lee Skelchenik has been, you know, a little bit more consistent considering what he's been through in Montreal with the change in position and lineup and line mates consistently. I thought he's done good considering. So give me your thoughts down below on the trade. I'd love to know what you think. We can discuss further down in the comment section. But as of right now, I'm not a fan of this trade from the Montreal perspective. I think the Coyotes did rather well bringing in Galchenyuk. I think he's going to give that team a big boost heading into next season. Now, if you're new to the channel, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams, and there is plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So hit that subscribe button. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button as well. I'd really appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.